Hello, this is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com and today I'm talking with you about choosing rev humanism, reverence, and a path to Shambhala. And this is a time that many people are noticing as a time of inversion. What that means is that some of the very organizations and government agencies and so forth that we would expect to be taking care of our national security, of our health, of our education, seem to be doing if not quite exactly the opposite, something that's not exa entirely positive either. And these things are happening around the, the world, not just in any one country. Greg Braden recently created a video where he was taking a look at the question, are we following an ancient script? And in this video, he talks about the prophecies from the Bible, and he's aware of biblical prophecies as well as Hopi and indigenous prophecies that are all showing signs that we might be saying Armageddon is near. And he specifically takes a look in this video, are we following an ancient script? He looks at Psalm 83 of the Bible. And in that Psalm 83, with careful scrutiny and study, it's apparent that some of the names of various countries and nations are identified that would be having an unusual kind of an alliance in the times right before Armageddon. And that does seem to be what's happening. Greg Braden breaks that down in some detail. And then he asks the kind of question that I love because it's the kind of question that I think we actually would like to live the answer to, which is, do we as conscious beings, as spiritual beings, have the right to self-determination of our future? Can we awaken into the point where we can have the thousand years of peace without the Gog Magog, without the tribulation, without the Armageddon? And as I said, I love these questions because they invite us to live the kind of future that we would like to live the answer to, not something that we don't want to live the answer to. It's really a how good can it get kind of a question there, which I love. And many people, as I was saying, are noticing that we seem to be living in an upside topsy down, topsy turvy, upside down, inverted kind of a world. Um, many countries now seem like their national security is not so secure. Their borders seem wide open. Illegal immigration is encouraged for some reason. Um, education seems upside down. The health um, of the nation seems to be upside down. I'm not picking on anyone in particular. I'm just saying if you look for it, you'll see these patterns and that they're not just in one country. They're becoming endemic in the world. This is problematic um, because signs of this inversion that I'm talking about are indicating that as these um, trusted organizations are doing pretty much the opposite of what the citizenry would wish them to be doing, then this would be definitely qualified as something known as an inversion. I'm just holding up a cover to Dennis Kingsley's book by that title, The Inversion. And in that book, Dennis Kingsley, he invites us to question why an industrial technology media complex has become the dominant political and economic force of governance and how our way of life seems to be moving toward becoming increasingly more morally corrupt and upside down. Now, Kingsley Dennis is writing from the United Kingdom, from England, uh, but this is a worldwide problem. So the questions he's raising are appropriate everywhere, pretty much in the world right now. There are some exceptions, but it's pretty pervasive. Okay, so how do we go from this sand trap in life, this inversion state of being that clearly is not optimal? I don't think it's how good it can it get. How do we get out of that and what would that look like? Well. I had a discussion with a friend this last month and she was saying that it occurs to her that after the inversion of, of a mother giving birth to a child, uh, it's almost like the uterus doesn't quite get turned inside out, but it might feel that way. There's a reversion and after the inversion and the stress and trauma of childbirth, there's this beautiful peaceful time. And that friend doesn't have a lot of children, but I do have a friend who does have many, many children. She would agree. She does agree. She loves that time after birth, the very special, sweet, sacred time when there's a magical sweetness in the air, when that mother-child bond is just enchanting. It feels, it's, uh, there's no feeling like it is how she describes it. So these golden moments of 
moving out of the inversion into a time of reconnection, that appears to me to be the key. And I also saw that many decades ago in a book by Barbara Marks Hubbard. She pointed out in her book uh, that our crisis is a birth. That's actually in the title of her book. And she was ahead of her time, really saying, it's gonna be a crisis, it'll be a birth. Now, I don't know if she talked about the golden time after the birth. It's been a while since I read her book, but I just wanna do a shout out there for her. Um, but anyway, back on course. So when we know that we're moving out of an inversion into a reversion, then we can experience a sense of reverence, hopefully, reconnection, hopefully. And this thing that I talk about is rev humanism. It's an alternate. It's like a take the exit off the freeway when everyone else looks headed for transhumanism and Armageddon. Those of us who don't like the sound of that, who feel that's not as good as it can get, we can take that off ramp and take that off ramp to rev humanism, to reversion, to connection. It's really about reverence, um, experiencing synchronicity, beautiful patterns in life, harmonies, and that connection. Um, I want to say one more thing about Greg Braden's video, though, because he mentions within the whole construct of the Bible, the biblical prophecy, there's something called the rapture, which is a little bit like taking the off-ramp. And his words about that, the biblical prophecy of the rapture, they go, another reason that so many are examining what's happening in the Middle East and Israel right now with a magnifying glass is because there's a prophesized event called the rapture. The rapture is being linked with what many now are calling ascension. And there's a whole series of conversations about ascension that means different things to different people. I would agree with that. I did create a workshop that's still available that you can actually still take. It's on my website, realityshifters.com, under the events page. And it's, it's online, so you can just sign up and take it anytime. And I set it up so that you can notice where you are individually on your path of ascension, what kind of signs and signals you're seeing. Might be repeating numbers, might be synchronicities, might be feeling energy. I go through a lot of that and lots of other indicators that you're at various points along the way. It is an individual process. And along the way also, I provide ticks, tips and techniques for moving beyond that victim triangle that Lynn Forrest writes and talks about in her book by that title. So I share some ideas from that so that you can not get caught up in all of that emotional drama that's going on on the freeway which where people are bombing forward into. They, want, they seem to be headed for that World War III. Maybe it's not necessary that humans need to go through it. Maybe we can take the off-ramp and maybe recognizing that there is uh, something greater than our own human egoic um, sense of self or a very egoic identity. Maybe we can bring that to higher levels within our culture, within our society, recognizing what Jesus Christ was talking about in the Bible, recognizing the truth of our own salvation and believing in this alignment with divinity, with the absolute with this idea of absolute, unconditional, divine love. And in doing so, uh, we are definitely moving through a personal level of ascension, and we can share it too. Um, this is where it gets, to me, exciting about the idea of rev humanism, bringing it back into our society, recognizing that we can help others just with our own example, with our own reverence, our own humility, compassion, kindness, empathy, um, really recognizing connections within ourselves, levels of ourself, and with our connections to our friends, family, to nature, to everyone and everything around. And that can help us rise above feeling like our buttons are getting pushed, feeling like we're in fight or flight mode, feeling traumatized or shocked. Uh, it can develop within us a deep sense of groundedness, connectedness, and there's a collective sense that can happen there. So this, this rev humanism is the way, um, it's, it's the sane way to live, even in crazy times. And it does invite us to live according to our highest potential of embodying more wisdom than cleverness, more hope than cynicism, more humility than hubris, more empathy than apathy, and more reverence than insolence. 
So this is a very spiritual path, but it's not necessarily any one given religion. It's recognizing God is everywhere. God is the great creator. The creator is the absolute, that there's just one, and that that is a radical invitation, really. It's very radical to be invited on this path to be the highest level embodiment of consciousness that we wish to see in the world. So we can do that and live from the perspective of reverence, in which case the doors to adjacent possible realities can open where there were no doors before. So with that, I invite you to keep asking my favorite question, of course, which is how good can it get in any circumstance, any situation, even if it feels like you're being sarcastic, say it with as much heartfelt meaning as you can, and it'll be the beginning of a ray of light, the door opening, and that door will open where there was no door before. So love you so very, very much. Take good care.